anyway. Uh, so yeah, those guys were really, you know, uh, they were kind of like the newer guys, you know. Uh, as much as, you know, with Judd, you know, I mean, I mean the first time I saw a, a Judd box, a plexiglass box, that was kind of held together by um, these, like, wires. And I think it had a sta two stainless ends and plexiglass around it. And I'd been using some plexiglass, but for kind of in a different way. And the whole thing, I remember looking at it going, yeah, that's really cool. You know, I mean, it's like, that really makes sense. You know, I, I get it, you know. Uh, I understand it. And there was a few shows in San Francisco, you know, and typical of all young artists. I've read other, you know, guys say the same thing, you know, I mean, David Smith once said, yeah, it all looked alike at one point. You know, and that's the way, I mean, pop art, minimal art, uh, hard edge paint, whatever you want to call it. You know, um, guys from England, op art, you know. I remember a show of it. I thought, like, to me, it was all the same stuff, you know. I mean, yeah, I mean, C. Oldenburg had, I remember this one show, essentially, he had an ironing board, which I was a little disappointed in because I liked his work. And that was the show. I thought, that's eh, not his best piece. I always liked his... Uh, like the, the soft fans he did and the drum kit and things like that. Right, I thought it was always disappointing that he, once he got really kind of successful, he started commissioning to do these pieces out of metal. And probably what he should have done is taken the soft stuff and cast it in bronze or something. I don't know. It just like lost something when he started fabricating, you know? He should have cast it. I don't know. But anyway, that's another story. But um, yeah, you know, it was, it was, yeah, it was a heady time, you know? and all that stuff, you know, and, and in San Francisco, I remember later, yeah, they do have a David Smith in the museum. Probably have a few now, uh, but I remember going like, yeah, what's this David Smith guy about? This is interesting, you know? Uh, but I didn't pay that much attention to it. It wasn't until I came to New York, you know, that I started seeing David Smith. The thing about David Smith, particularly David Smith, um, was I never felt he photographed that well. You'd see a photograph, it looked, yeah, but, there was a show at the Guggenheim, I forget what year it was, let's just say it was 67, 66, 67, and I went, oh man, this guy is really powerful. This is powerful work, you know, I mean, forget about those photographs. This is, you know, really strong stuff. And um, I thought, yeah, you know, that's, that's interesting, yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff there. I mean, you know, looking at all these guys, and, you know, kind of fell in with this group that, would even be kind of called the formalist now, with, you know, Greenberg being the critic, and Michael Freed, and Ken Moffat, and E.A. Carmine, and uh, I met, I even, you know, like, uh, I started showing out in Texas, and that's how I met E.A. Carmine, and Philippe Montebello. I mean, on paper, it looks like Philippe Montebello gave me my first commission. Truth was, it was really E.A. who told Philippe to give it to me, you know? But, uh, <laughs> you know? Um, Shawnee, Texas, with all these guys down there at the uh, Tibor. I'm showing with Tibor Denage at that, you know, like, uh, what was that? Early, yeah, the early 70s. Uh, Tibor opens an annex with a guy named Marvin Watson. Meredith Long is a silent partner. You know, it's a great gallery. A lot of good stuff is being shown there. Until Peter Sheldahl showed up and told everybody that it was crap, and then the Houston scene has never recovered from Sheldahl's comments or his lecture he gave. It was like, anyway, uh, but, um, yeah, so I, I mean, every day there's somebody, you know what I mean? It's, 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 uh, it's always something, you know, I go, go up to Chelsea one day and go, ah, it's all this stuff is crap, and you see one show and you go, hey, this is pretty interesting. You know, and go, you learn something, you know. I mean, I walked into Lee Krasner's show about, what, this time last year. I don't know when it was, at Robert Miller. And I, at first I walked in, and I went, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, these are ugly, you know. And then I started looking at it. And I was with a friend who kind of slowed me down my usual, you know, you know, zip through this gallery in three minutes, you know. And after a while, I went, oh, man. She's some painter, you know, this is a real lesson here, you know, this is about honesty, you know, and she's, she's all about honesty here, and this is real, and I thought, yeah, I mean, there, were, and then there was the one painting in the back that was kind of showcased, which was, you know, the fake painting, the painting to make everybody happy, that, you know, someone would buy or some shit, you know, and I thought, yeah, and all this other stuff is, uh, this is really, 
this is really good stuff. And it's raw, really raw. <laughs> you know, it's like I looked at it and intelligent. Intelligent and raw. You know, I never really looked at her work that much. You know, I'd seen some things here and there that I thought were pretty good. And that was about it, you know? The, uh, do you have any more other experiences like where uh, it took you longer to look at something? Oh yeah. So you really got into it? Yeah, there's lots of there's stuff there's like that. So many people, they, they, you know, it's like a like a five second rule, you know, they spend like five seconds yeah, in front of it and then they walk away from it. I mean, you even see it, people doing it to Van Gogh and the museums, you know, and... and they, yeah, I, I've, I've had quite a bit of that. Uh, there's some artists that I, I definitely, if, if I don't like the work that much, I give it three years or so before I really start going, all right, that wasn't so good, or, you know, if I see it again or whatever, you know. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, in a lot of ways, even Chamberlain, as much as I always liked Chamberlain's work, I feel that there's an importance to it. And he's been doing something that I don't think is quite, and I think it has an influence that hasn't been really acknowledged yet, which is, you know, he really does, as much as last show, the show of Gagosian maybe fell into this older idea a little more, but getting away from that whole monumental kind of, you know, like all, even the minimalists, I mean, they're very much, you know, all I can say, it's like, and you see a lot of people working, and I think, you know, like you see, it, this is very hard to talk about, but, um, I mean, you see people literally making stuff out of, you know, rags and paper and uh, very uh, kind of, what do you want to say, non-sustainable materials uh, for a reason, because they can manipulate it in such a way that create something that I did, like, see, I don't think you can make the horse in the park monument, you know, the rider, the old Confederate soldier or Union soldier, Grant, whatever, you know, sitting on the bronze horse in the park or, you know, on the corner of, you know, whatever, some intersection in a big city. Uh, that stuff just doesn't, it just doesn't make sense anymore for whatever reason, it just doesn't, you know, and, um, I think the last of it might be the minimalist guys. You know, they they kind of found a way of doing that and still keep it new. You know, but it isn't new anymore, and it doesn't feel right. You know, it just it's like uh, what can I say? You know, I hate to use the word old fashioned, but that's what it is. You know, and I, but mostly it just doesn't feel right. It's like I mean, like there was a show over at um, the New Museum called uh, Unmonumental, and. Uh, I didn't, is that one woman, was it, is it, is it, is it gets, I don't know how to say her name. I thought she was pretty good. The rest of it I didn't get too much into, but the whole show I understood what every one of these artists were, were going after, you know. And I've been going after it too, you know, particularly pieces like this, you know. Uh, I mean, this too, this, this big one was kind of where, you know, I mean, it, it, for me it's a, it's, you know, you're talking about, well, you know, what's affected you. What affected me, I, you know, really didn't like all this stuff here, outside of all that stuff I just talked about, was li a literal translation of my drawings, you know, looking at the drawings and going, well, what if a sculpture looked just like that drawing? Forget about, you know, you're tying it up or something, you're making all the, you know, putting all the ends together so it can support itself. How about if you kind of get past, somehow figure out a way to engineer it, that it, it will stand and support itself and look like this drawing. And if you did kind of look at the drawing, and be like, well, how it's all kind of hanging in air, you know? I mean, you talk about drawing in space, you know? Maybe we should call it my style hanging in air. <laughs> you know, that's, maybe that's better, you know? But um, yeah, you know, that's, yeah. I mean, even a piece like that, you know, I mean, as much as that, I have some ideas of kind of going back to that a little bit, but going back to that, but bringing this knowledge with it, you know? Um, that's kind of where I'm headed right now. Um, 